found something. Buenos Aires International Airport this morning. Now watch this. Heralds. Trail ends at the airport, but turns out that a top Providence operative owns a vineyard in the area. Don Yates, of infamous New York law firm Morgan Yates and Cohn. And get this, it's hosting his retirement party today. She's infiltrated them. She's sending a message. She needs my help. Could have fooled me. You don't know her. Anyway, if you're going after her, you'll need to deal with the Herald. Her name's Tamara Vidal, former CIA asset and political firebrand. She's a master of surveillance and the Constance's most trusted aide. She'll have eyes everywhere. You won't get far as long as she's in the game. Why are you telling me this? I thought you were out. Yeah. Old habits, I guess. Anyway, I... I need to go. See you around, 47. No. You won't. Because you're not an idiot. Let's just humor him. Yates likes his little games. Don't be long. You got my message. You'd never get caught on camera. Not unless you want it to be seen. So what's the play? You're not the only one who's been busy, 47. I'm this close to becoming the next constant. I'll be able to dismantle Providence from the inside. Only one man stands in my way. Don Yates. That weasel was the partner's legal counsel for years. He's the top candidate. But remove him from the playing field. It won't work. If Edward suspects... I will convince him you acted alone. Retaliation for Grey. Trust me, I know what I'm doing. The Herald, Tamara Vidal. She has eyes everywhere, and they're all fixed on you. The plan won't work unless we take her out. She never leaves my side for long. Whatever your plan is, I'll help you if I can. You're sure about this? As sure as I'll ever be. Here, I got you an invitation, just like old times. Come find me when it's done. Good luck, 47. Go on. We shouldn't be seen together. Well, have at it, 47. Like I said, We'll talk again when it's done. Tamara Vidal. I'm here for the tour, it seems. Ah, yes. Miss Vidal. My apologies. I didn't recognize you. Let me sign you in. Luther? Burnwood's flying solo. I want all eyes on. Let's see what she does. And Luther. Redeploy the birds and key in on the party area. We spread too thin, too many blind spots. Anyone as much as sneeze in the wrong direction, I want to know about it. They're all done. And I see your tour guide is none other than Gabriel Vargas, the state's chief winemaker. Well, this is a rare privilege. You and Don Yates must be very close. Yes. About 400 meters, I should say. Pardon me? Never mind. I'll just wait here for my companion. Carry on. See that guy over there? That's Don Yates' fixer from New York. That is Corvo Black? Don't stare. He's busted heads for less. 
That man's a beast. Well, I know the stories. Started out in narcotics, got fired for misconduct. Not to mention headbutting an internal affairs officer. He turned PI and eventually wound up on the payroll of Morgan, Yates, and Cohen as an investigative consultant. Right. Evidence tampering. Witness intimidation. The odd bit of b &E. A regular jack of all trades. I take it you heard about Reggie West's hit and run? Nasty business. But I suppose everybody needs a Corvo now and then. Wonder what he's doing here, though. At Yates' retirement party. Yates is the kind of man who keeps his enemies close. I figure old Corvo is not here for the whole deal. Corvo, got a message from the boss. Duty calls. Let me guess, the Burnwood woman. That's right. Yates has arranged for the chief winemaker to take Burnwood and Tamara Vidal on a grand tour of the estate. Once he to tag along. Not for my sparkling personality. This Burnwood woman sure has his panties in a twist. Wonder what the deal is. Yates' business is his business. Just get yourself ready and sign into the visitor center. Oh, have a drink on my behalf. I don't drink. It makes me sentimental. Mr. Yates. Yeah, I got your message. You mind telling me what I'm... Nothing quite spoils a party like your guests okay. inexplicably dropping dead. Yeah, I can do the next step. In fact, a couple of spots come to mind. On the tour or after. Stand by. So you're not sure yet? Does that mean there's a plan A? One where I don't stand a 50-50 chance of getting caught? I mean, you do realise the risk here, boss. Broad daylight, workers around. Who exactly is this bird? It's a nice gesture, right. but it's a bit you say, he's not even right. better But if I'm going to be one of these heralds of yours, you need to start letting me in on a few things. Okay. I'm more of so a who's this fool guy? But if Yates wants to bring the heralds closer together and Thank play you. the modern boss, I, I don't actually mind. <laughs> nah, no, no problem. I just never framed an urban legend before. Very post-truth. Yeah, I like you. Had a direct line of contact. I think Yates is at the top of a very short list. So, Mr. Yates, what can I do for you? A tour of the facility? At this hour? I didn't know we had investors come in. A private tour. Mr. Yates, with all due respect, we are about to harvest them all back. I hardly think this is the best use of my time. Fine, if you say so. Who is the audience? Diana Barnwood and Tamara Vidal? The politician Tamara Vidal? Okay, and the last one? Corpo Black? Is he your um, fixer? The scary one? Okay, I'll... I'll clear my schedule. Right. Thank you, Mr. Yates. Enjoy the... Why does he want me to play tour guide to his socialite friends? It's our best day! He probably just wants to show off, Patron. I know I would. Mm. Patron! Señor Vargas! What? What is he now? What? You have some guests waiting. Señor Yates wanted you to give them the grand tour. Remember? As if I don't have more important things to do than babysit Yates' socialite friends. It's only harvest season. Better do what he says, Patron. Big shot New York lawyer like that. Don't want to get on his bad side. Well, I'm not going anywhere until I have decided if the crop is right for picking. Bring me the three Malbec grapes to taste, Ramon. If Yates doesn't like how I prioritize, he can weigh me down with concrete and toss me off a bridge. How's that? <sighs> three grapes, was it? I'll get my picking knife. Oh, man, come on. I left it right here. Seriously, who takes another man's picking knife? I, it's gonna be one of those days, isn't it? Did I leave it at lunch? No, no, I had it here when we... Oh, so stupid. Patron is waiting for his grapes. 
No, not here. Great job, Ramon. Just great. That knife is coming out of your salary. Picky knife, picky knife. Picky... Oh, for the love of Guajero, no me lo puedo creer, ay, por Dios. Hey, is that... Uh, no. No my picky knife. Jesus mío, I think I need glasses. Mr. Vargas, I have the three grapes you requested. Yes, good. Bring him here. Now, let's see. A lovely inky black color. Good size. Large and firm. Feeds brown. Excellent. And finally, taste. Mm. Sweet, flavorful, robust tannins. Some floral notes. Marvelous. Why? I say these grapes are ripe for harvest. In for the workers, will you, Ramon? I... I have a third to contact. Will do. Ah, my fellow wine lovers. Hello. Welcome to Vineda Yates. I do apologize for the delay, but the Malbec grape is a demanding mistress. So, I am Gabriel Vargas, chief wine maker, and I will be your tour guide. Any questions before we start? Yes. But you're not going to like them. I, uh... We're good. Lead the way, Senor Vargas. Wonderful. Follow me. Are you a wine man, Black? Somehow you don't seem the type. No, I'm a bit of a jack of all trades. I see. I just thought Yates might be sending a message. My mistake. So, have any of you been on a vineyard before? Scrapyards are more my thing. Uh-huh. First stop on the tour is the production floor where our prize-winning Malbec grapes are processed. We insist on the steaming every grape by hand, which means that during harvest season, the grapes do tend to pile up. Luckily, we have plenty of storage space. Our equipment is state-of-the-art, including an industrial-sized freezer unit, and last but not least, our trusty grape crusher. Interesting. Wouldn't you say, Mr. Black? Follow me, please. Right. Next on our tour is the fermentation atrium, where the wine goes to its primary stage of fermentation. In these big open tanks, yeast converts the sugars in the wine to alcohol in a process that lasts between 5 and 15 days. This is also where we squeeze the mass into a fine juice using our grape presser before the longer secondary stage of fermentation. Fascinating. Excelente. Let's continue to the barrel room, if you'll follow me. And so we arrive to our final stop, the barrel room. This is where we store the wine during the secondary stage of fermentation. The area behind the glass is where we keep our most precious bottles, including a 1945 Grand Paladin, the most expensive wine in existence. The access doors, which are made from ballistic glass, can only be unlocked from the security room high above our heads. Remarkable. Ah, here comes Senor Yates now. I shall leave you in his capable hands. How reassuring. Ah, it's Burnwood, is it not? Don Yates, pleased to meet you. You come very highly recommended. As chief of the Heralds, let me be the first to say welcome aboard. Why, thank you, Mr. Yates. Rest assured that I will be following your every lead very closely. Say, that reminds me. We're about to have a little Herald get-together up at the house. Just a modest toast to celebrate my forthcoming inauguration as constant. You are, of course, most welcome to join us. I believe you shall make a fine Herald once the training wheels are off. I wouldn't miss it for the world. Capital, right this way. Into the lion's den. <laughs> oh, almost forgot. Cortazar, please nip down to the wine cellar and tell Mr. Flowers, the sommelier, to prep the 1945 Grand Paladin and bring it up to the house for our special occasion. Got it, Chief.
Welcome to Vignetta Yates. Day. I'm Gabriel Vargas, chief winemaker, and I will be your tour guide. Any questions before we start? Yes, but they're all above your pay grade. We're good. Lead the way, Senor Vargas. Follow me. First stop on the tour is the production floor, where our prize-winning Malbec grapes are processed. Our equipment is state-of-the-art, including a drag-in freezer unit. And last but not least, our grape crusher, industrial size for your disposal purposes. Interesting. Follow me, please. This is an industrial cold storage unit, useful for preventing cellular decomposition. It easily reaches temperatures of minus 10 degrees Celsius. Trust me, you don't want to stay inside for long. No kidding. Hey, there's no doorknob on the inside. Seems like a pretty glaring safety omission, if you ask me. Probably soundproof, too. And good luck getting a phone signal. Follow me, please. This is our grape crusher. The de-stemmed grapes are crushed into a thick pulp by a powerful rotating cylinder, making each grape quite impossible to ID. Have you had any workplace accidents? One. Fall into the vat and get crushed to a pulp. You'd have to be a bona fide idiot. Waste of space if you ask me. Follow me, please. Next on our tour is the fermentation atrium. In these spacious tanks, which could easily be able to contain a couple of hundred human bodies, the sugars in the wine are converted to alcohol. This is also where we squeeze the must into a fine juice using our grape presser. Fascinating. Come along. This is the facility's grape presser, where the freshly crushed pulp is pressed through a fine filter, leaving only the flesh and skins behind. Much more efficient than the ancient practice of grape stomping, but also less personal. So, this is what the little guy feels like. Our large fermentation tanks are constructed from solid French oak, and each contain up to 500 gallons of grape must. You don't want to fall in, but if you do, at least you'll die happy. Well, looks like an accident waiting to happen. Occupational hazard. Eh, Burnwood? Final stop, the barrel room. Nothing dramatic, just wine biding its time. The vault next door contains our most precious bottles, but the access doors are made from ballistic glass and can only be unlocked from the security room high above our heads. So, unless you're the sparrow, don't get any ideas. Remarkable. Ah, here comes Mr. Yates now. Perfect timing. Ah, it's Burnwood, is it not? Don Yates, pleased to meet you. You come very highly recommended. As Chief of the Heralds, let me be the first to say welcome aboard. Why, thank you, Mr. Yates. Rest assured that I will be following your every lead very closely. Say, that reminds me. We're about to have a little Herald get-together up at the house. Just a modest toast to celebrate my forthcoming inauguration as constant. You are, of course, most welcome to join us. I believe you shall make a fine herald, once the training wheels are off. I wouldn't miss it for the world. Capital, right this way, into the lion's den. <laughs> oh, almost forgot. Cortazar, please nip down to the wine cellar and tell Mr. Flowers, the sommelier, to prep the 1945 Grand Paladin and bring it up to the house for our special occasion. Got it, Chief. Welcome to the Yates Winery. How may I help you? Corvo Black. I'm on the tour. Right. Mr. Black. Welcome. Miss Burnwood and Miss Vidal will meet you down by the wine fields. I trust you know the way. I can find my way around. Enjoy the tour. Vidal is a true believer. Over here. You too. 
must be Burnwood and Vidal. And you must be Yates's garbage man. Sorry, but I didn't catch your name. This is Corvo Black, Tamara. He's a ICA regular. I only work with the best. Well, we're all here, it seems. Except for our guide, the chief winemaker. Looks like we're stuck here until someone fetches him. Mr. Black, I'm looking in your direction. Hold on. I'll track him down. boy. Do try and bring him back in one piece. Counterintuitive as that may be. That was a bit rude. Yes. Yes, it was. Ah, my fellow wine lovers. Hello. Welcome to Vineda Yates. I do apologize for the delay, but the Malbec grape is a demanding mistress. So, I am Gabriel Vargas, chief one maker, and I will be your tour guide. Any questions before we start? Yes, but you're not going to like them. I, uh... We're good. Lead the way, Senor Vargas. Wonderful. Follow me. These are busy times. In fact, we're just about to harvest this year's crop. Great expectations. So, how do you like Argentina? Like everywhere else. Full of Americans. First stop on the tour is the production floor, where our prize-winning Malbec grapes are processed. We insist on the steaming every grape by hand, which means that during harvest season, the grapes do tend to pile up. Luckily, we have plenty of storage space. Our equipment is state-of-the-art, including an industrial-sized freezer unit, and last but not least, our trusty grape crusher. Interesting. Wouldn't you say, Mr. Black? Follow me, please. I can't do this anymore. My five-year-old cousin comes up to me. Are you a wine man, Black? Somehow you don't seem the type. Oh, I believe Mr. Black here is something of a jack of all trades. Isn't that so? I dabble. I see. I just thought Yates might be sending a message. My mistake. So, have any of you been to our vineyard before? Only on business. Next on our tour is the fermentation atrium, where the wine goes through its primary stage of fermentation. In these big open tanks, yeast converts the sugars in the wine to alcohol, in a process that lasts between 5 and 15 days. This is also where we squeeze the mass into a fine juice using our grape presser before the longer secondary stage of fermentation. Fascinating. Now, before we move on, do any of you have questions? How about you, Mr. Black? You look like you have something on your mind. I have a question. It's... perhaps we can take a closer look. Certainly. Lead the way. What can you tell me about this device? Great presser, was it? That is correct, senor. After primary fermentation, the mass is pressed through a fine filter, leaving only the flesh and skins behind. I should add, the grape stomping, the iconic practice of crushing grapes with your bare feet, is historically red and mostly a tourist gimmick. But you are most welcome to try. Imagine you're a grape. <laughs> Thanks. I'll pass. Oh, go on. I'll take a picture of the three of you. Oh, come on, Tamara. When in Rome. Fine. So, may I see that, Mr. Vargas? I believe I blinked. So, this is what the little guy feels like. No, nope, all good. Looks like one for the mantle. Now, are there any more questions? Don't be shy. What can you tell me about this freezer? This is an industrial cold storage unit to keep our excess grape stock to prevent decay. It easily reaches temperatures of minus 10 degrees Celsius. Trust me, you don't want to stay in here for long. No kidding. Hey, there's no doorknob on the inside. Seems like a pretty glaring safety omission, if you ask me. Probably soundproof, too. And good luck getting a phone signal. Such imaginations you have. But there really is no need to worry. Why? We haven't had an accident since Mrs. Yates' dog was run over by a great picker. 
Any further questions? Ask away. What can you tell me about this grape crusher? Well, as the name implies, it crushes the steamed grapes into a thick pulp or must by a powerful rotating cylinder. She is one of the most important appliances in our production pipeline. Have you had any workplace accidents? No. Fall into the vat and get crushed to a pulp. You'd have to be a bona fide idiot. Waste of space, yes, no. Yes, well, fortunately, we have had none of that. So if there's no further questions... Hmm. Ah, uh, yes. I just love the peanut butter. And done. Oh. Anything else you wish to know? It's really not trouble. I'm interested in these containers. Ah, yes. Our large fermentation tanks are constructed from solid French oak and each contain up to 500 gallons of grey mass. Interesting. Are those cooling sockets? They are indeed, senor. The cooling system allows us to fine-tune the entire process. Temperature, humidity levels, etc. Our goal here at Pineda Yates is quite simple. From the state-of-the-art winemaking facility to our carefully nurtured grape stock, hand-picked with loving care by local experts, we have only one purpose, to make the best vinos in Argentina and beyond. Well, looks like an accident waiting to happen. Occupational hazard. Hey, Burnwood? Are you enjoying yourself, Mrs. Black? Oh, it's all very inspiring. One making is a grand pursuit. Sure, sure, everyone talks about craft beer these days. You can make a decent IPA in your pantry. It is yeah. the best thing. No, this is my friends. This is true grandeur. Excelente. So let's continue to the barrel room, if you'll follow me. And so we arrive to our final stop, the barrel room. This is where we store the wine during the secondary stage of fermentation. The area behind the glass is where we keep our most precious bottles, including a 1945 Grand Paladin, the most expensive wine in existence. The access doors, which are made from ballistic glass, can only be unlocked from the security room high above our heads. Remarkable. Ah, here comes Senor Yates now. I shall leave you in his capable hands. How reassuring. Ah, Miss Burnwood, is it not? Don Yates, pleased to meet you. You come very highly recommended. As Chief of the Heralds, let me be the first to say welcome aboard. Why, thank you, Mr. Yates. Rest assured that I will be following your every lead very closely. Say, that reminds me. We're about to have a little herald get-together up in the house. Just a modest toast to celebrate my forthcoming inauguration as constant. You are, of course, most welcome to join us. I believe you shall make a fine herald once the training wheels are off. I wouldn't miss it for the world. Capital. Right this way. Into the lion's den. <laughs> Why don't you take a break, Corvo? We're done here for now, I think. Oh, but don't go too far. I may still need your services later. I'll be closer than you think. Oh, almost forgot. Cortazar, please nip down to the wine cellar and tell Mr. Flowers, the sommelier, to prep the 1945 Grand Paladin and bring it up to the house for our special occasion. Got it, Chief. Urgent call. Something about work. I don't think she'll be coming back. Oh, well. I'm sure she can find her way out. Let's proceed. Let's continue to the barrel room. Follow me. 
Seems like a pretty glaring safety omission, if you ask me. Probably soundproof, too. And good luck getting your phone signal. Thought you might. Callus 47. I believe I taught you better than that. I suppose this concludes the tour. Catch you later, Mr. Black. We'll continue our conversation somewhere less. Any further questions? Ask away. Now, are there any more questions? Don't be shy. Anything else you wish to know? It's really no trouble. I got all I need. Larry. Mr. Yates, sorry, I... How can I help you? The 1945 Grand Paladin? Why, yes, I will tell the Samelia right away. You're welcome, Mr. Yates. Oh, and congra... <clears throat> Excuse me, Mr. Flowers? What is it? What do you need? Get it yourself. It's Mr. Yates. He wants the 1945 Grand Paladin brought up to the house right away. A what? What? What for? Special occasion is all he said. Uh, my dear sweet Lawrence, no occasion is that special. Not good, huh? You have no idea. Uh, fine. It's his blunder. land on the front lawn? Have the ghosts of Jesus, John Lennon, and Ava Perone unexpectedly come for dinner? Help me out here. What could possibly be so special? Above your clearance, Flowers. Just fetch it already. Fine. What's the passcode again? Last year at World War II. If you have to look it up, shame on you. Are you all right, Patron? Uh. I'm fine, Santino. It's just... Oh, the 1945 Grand Paladin? It is perfection. Irreplaceable. You don't drink the 1945 Grand Paladin any more than you would write a shopping list on the Mona Lisa. Oh, men like Don Yates know the price of everything, but the value of nothing. I am sorry, Padron. Say... What if we exchanged the labels? Served him a different wine. Ah, you are devious, Santino. But no. If Mr. Yates wishes to destroy something beautiful, I will not stand in his way. That is between him and his creator. How did he even get his hands on a bottle? I hear the last of the 45s were sold to Sheikh Omar Al Ghazali for $600,000. Most expensive bottle ever sold! Ah, uh, yes. Uh, a curious story. See, that bottle you refer to came from a case of 12, which were recovered from a sunken Carlisle shipping container that went down in the South China Sea during the final days of World War II. You know, of those 12, only five were raised intact. Al Ghazali bought one under great media coverage, while the others simply disappeared quietly obtained by some clandestine private collector until one of the bottles was donated to Mr. Yates by Byron Washington, CEO of the Pax Mundus Foundation, as a reward for winning a court case. Now, Byron's twin daughters were treasure hunters, so that explains how he managed to get first pick. Ah, but you see... I was here when the bottle arrived, and the crate it arrived in bore a curious logo. Something called the Ark Society. Intriguing. Do you know what it means? Well, not a clue. And now, we will never know. Oh, 
You don't get attached, Santino. For all fine things in life are transient. not yours. Hey, Flowers, over here. Come on, while we're young. Sir, I present to you the 1945 Grand Paladin. Huh. Somehow I thought it'd be bigger. Come on, Flowers. Guests are waiting. Go on, get yourself patted down. We're still on alert from all those big shot CEOs getting offed. I'm gonna need to frisk you if you want to come through here. They stopped twitching. You're not making my life easy here. Okay, man. Vamos. So here's the deal, Flowers. The boss is having a powwow with some employees, and discretion is the name of the game. I'm sure you figured that out already, you being a scholar and all. Don't discuss, disclose, or hell, even contemplate what goes down. Just set your mind to wool-gathering mode. You think you can do that for me, Flowers? Worry not, Mr. Cortazar. I'm the very soul of discretion. Good man. They're already at it. Go on, place the wine on the table. I'll pour it. Decant. Pardon me, your majesty. Hi. Hey, what's wrong with you, man? Place the damn bottle. Flowers, the bottle. Flowers, you're blowing it. I have always considered the Heralds the unspoken heroes of Providence. The nervous system, effectively and reliably transmitting the decrees of the brain to the body and limbs of our great organization. And I am delighted that so many of you were able to join me today, despite your busy schedules, and celebrate my retirement from the world of law and imminent instatement as the third constant of Providence. Make no mistake, I have two formidable sets of shoes to fill, but I am a thirst to pick up the mantle. Ah, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Flowers, our resident sommelier. I believe he has brought us something quite special. Perhaps you will educate us, Mr. Flowers. This is the 1945 Grand Paladin. One of only five bottles in existence. The vintage is legendary. The proverbial unicorn wine. The year was hot. The wines super concentrated, and thanks to hail and frost, the production was small. Only 300 bottles were ever produced. And when the vineyard was bombed during the closing days of World War II, only a single crate survived. It is said to have amazingly complex aromas with long, savory layers of fruit and spice flavors and a silky texture. Enjoy. Wonderful. Thank you, Mr. Flowers. Feel free to stick around in case our guests have questions. This wine was gifted to me by the Ark Society in acknowledgement of my firm's legal services. 
It stands as a powerful reminder that Providence draws its strength not from force, but from partnership. We are but a few, and yet together, we are unstoppable, because we stand united. My friends, loyalty is everything, which is why we cannot allow traitors into our ranks. Ah, oh, yes. Here it comes. This woman has waged bloody war on us. More than a dozen heralds and operatives dead. Your colleagues and clients, my friend Ken Morgan. Not to mention the partners themselves, our founders, our benefactors. Make no mistake, this woman's hands are soaked in blood. Our blood. And Arthur Edwards, the new supreme head of Providence, is handing her the keys to the kingdom. Now, does that seem right to you, my friends? Does that sound like loyalty? Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Perhaps Edwards simply recognizes talent when he sees it. Perhaps this is why I am also in the running to become constant and following this childish outburst. I dare say I am in the lead, Don. God, what the hell? You're lying, of course, which only proves my point. You cannot be trusted, Miss Burnwood. This woman will be our downfall. That is, unless we take matters into our own hands. You are heralds, sworn to protect Providence against all threats, including inside ones. I have devised a plan. Together we can make it work, but you have to decide now, my friends. Are you with me? Yes. I'm here. Yes, I agree. Yes. Listen to yourselves. Don Yate is not even appointed constant yet, and already he conspires to betray his master. I don't pretend to understand Edward's every move, but I do know that this man is an opportunist and unworthy of office. Then you are a traitor to the Heralds. The room is against you, Tamara. Stand down now or share her fate. Edward's will hear about this. I think not. I am sorry, but you brought this on yourself. Put her down. Escort Miss Burnwood to my office. I'll join you shortly. Right. Move it. Let's go. I'm warning you, Yates. This will not go your way. We need to get our story straight. Diana Burnwood died today by the hand of her rogue agent 47. Tamara Vidal, who saw through the assassin's disguise, was, alas, killed as well. This is what you will all attest to. I'm in. Yes. Yes. I agree. Yes. Yes. A toast, then, in her honor. Savor the taste, because you never will again. And let me remind you, we are in this together. One goes down, we all go down. Here's to loyalty. To loyalty. Valentina, it worked. Yes, they all back my plan, your plan. Cortazar will dispose of Burnwood, and Corvo is staging the crime scene, with all the heralds backing my story. Edwards will have no reason for doubt. As always, I owe it all to you, my love. Looks like a beautiful day after all. Yes.
It's Yates. Listen, I can't be absolutely sure, but I think I saw something. A man, tall, Caucasian, head shaven, generically handsome. You know, like a mannequin. Anyway, he was dressed as staff, but he was definitely not one of mine. And when he noticed me looking at him, he got up fast and slipped into the crowd. So you might want to keep an eye out for intruders. Like I pay you to? Right. See that you do. And now they're looking for an assassin. <laughs> like they say, the devil's in the detail. Remember, Flowers, you never saw a thing. Not a damn thing. Took you long enough. Quick, clear the floor and get yourself a guard outfit. Yates won't be long. Good. I was beginning to worry. Were you? No. Listen up, 47. Yates will be here shortly. He'll have his thug Cortazar do his dirty work, but he won't pass up on the chance for a good gloat and a monologue. So, private space? Kill room decor? Exactly. We won't get another shot at this. Now sit down and blend in. When I provide a distraction, you just be ready to move. Corvo, pick up your damn phone. Plan B is a go. I repeat, plan B is a go. Start prepping a crime scene, like we discussed. Remote, staged accident. Oh, and Corvo, make it for two. Just improvise. So, he's human after all. Good to know. 47 will find you. You will pay for this. You can shut her up now. Miss Burnwood. You Corvo, pick up your damn phone. Plan B is a go. I repeat, plan B is a go. Start prepping a crime scene, like we discussed. Remote, staged accident. Oh. And Corvo, make it for two. Just improvise. Miss Burnwood. You rolled out the red carpet just for me. Don, you shouldn't have. So confident, even in defeat. I suppose you're not used to danger, always safe behind your screens. Just tell me one thing before we part ways. Why me? Why? Why would Edwards trust you? Please. It will keep me awake at nights, and I'm 65. I get up four times to piss as it is. Oh, it's simple, really. Edwards is proud. He considers himself the cleverest man alive, and yet we tricked him on Isle of Scale, and it's eating him up. He needs to win. Full, unequivocal victory. My recruitment was just the feather in his cap. By the way, you were right about one thing. Yeah, I'm all ears. <sighs> Turns out this woman will be a downfall. If it's any uh, consolation, Don, what are you doing, you asshole? Don't stand there! Shoot her! And I will uh, make it my mission to tear down Providence brick uh, by brick. Uh, 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 Finish it. Uh, 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 Don't let my wife find me like this.
Well done, 47. Better get rid of the body. Won't be long before they come looking. When you're done, meet me on the dance floor. Oh, and dress appropriately. It's done. Now what? Now, we strike at the heart. Edwards. You know how to find him, don't you? Why, Edwards finds you, 47. He is untraceable, and he never lets you forget it. He is cocky, and that will be his downfall. What's the plan? Too many eyes. Meet me at the Olive Grove at sunset. One last tango, 47. How did you know? Your deal. That kind of power always comes with a price. What's yours? I think you know. I am sorry. This is a necessary evil. What have you done? Eat the brand neurotoxin, transfers by touch. See, Edwards learns by his mistakes, 47. And as you've clearly demonstrated, brute force is futile. It had to be me. It was the only way. To get this close. My family. I know what you did. After all these years, I finally know. I am sorry. You didn't have a choice. I did. Providence used you, but I'm no better. All I saw was a blank slate, a weapon to wield. I told myself it was what you needed, but people aren't meant to be controlled. This is a kindness. Goodbye, Agent. <laughs>